Now we would like to hand over to, uh, uh, <coughs> as announced previously, to Frank Kambi and Siu Yong Ong, uh, our colleagues from ETC European Tax Center, who were uh, uh, involved in uh, uh, implementing in the other countries. Uh, they are not. Uh, with us in the room, uh, however, they will uh, present uh, online. Uh, Frank, the floor is yours. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Reslav. Um, it's great to be here. Um, we would like to share some experiences that we have encountered in other countries. Um, so, uh, maybe if we can move on to the next slide after this one. The typical issues that we've seen in, in other countries we want to share, uh, like we have had them in, in Poland, France, Austria, but it's not only about the safety, it's uh, also about the whole request, the whole trend that we see uh, lately from tax authorities, um, pan-European, but also from a global perspective, to ask for more and more reports and more and more detailed uh, reports to be shared to the tax authorities which um, you could call that digitization of reporting adds a lot of complexity. So one of the first things, first things obviously, where we need to um, uh, be careful with is, is our master data. In a lot of cases, master data is uh, the area uh, that is not complete in ERP systems. So um, it is crucial that your master data needs to be uh, up to date. Now, if you look at master data, you, we need to look at it um, from a broader perspective. It's not only details about your customers or your vendors or your materials. Um, it, it is also uh, the transactional data that needs to be uh, complete and correct. We see in a lot of cases that data that needs to be shared in an electronic format uh, is not really available in the databases that they um, that are being used for, but uh, they're, for instance, printed automatically on an invoice, but as such, we cannot retrieve it from a database. So that is uh, really crucial uh, there. And I think what is also crucial, as long as we talk about transactional data, uh, and we mentioned it earlier, one of the files you need to provide data related to invoices or data related to sales orders or purchase order, that is fine. That is typical data that you will find back in an ERP or a financial uh, accounting system. But once we start talking about unstructured data, for instance, if you have to provide uh, the number of employees in, in your organization, your own address details, responsible uh, persons for the filing, that is something that is typically not available in your ERP system. So um, it's crucial to, to, to take care of all the data, analyze the data, where to find it, and make sure it's uh, up to date. That's one of the, the most important steps uh, as an action that I see a lot of companies that are thinking uh, that will be eligible for the, the safety filing in Poland. The, one of the first things is uh, cleaning up their master data and transactional data, because without that uh, correct data, it's going to be difficult to uh, find that. Secondly, the complexity of your IT infra um, infrastructure. To put it simple, if I have one single um, uh, Comart or one single SAP system and I want to create automatically the safety file out of one large data base uh, of SAP or an other ERP system, uh, it's not easy, but it's feasible. But once you, uh, your organization is working on multiple ERP platforms, and that can be in different versions, you might have uh, multiple legal entities in Poland, all eligible for safety filing. One in, uh, is on SAP, the other one is on Oracle, the other one is maybe on, a, on, on some local solution, Polish solution. Well, this would mean that you need to do safety filing out of the three different systems and that you need to uh, set up your, the creation of your safety file out of the three systems. So it's important there to analyze how you want to structure that. Do I want to build those safety files separately from, uh, for each system? Or maybe I want to use a platform, a central platform, where I centralize all the data that needs to be reported from my different environments and then uh, only use that one uh, platform. It could be a business warehouse uh, to create all my uh, safety files. 
So uh, that is something that uh, uh, I discussed last week in our Lisbon, uh, our global indirect tax conference. Uh, some of the clients shared that they use a data warehouse, and out of that data warehouse, they create their safety file for Portugal, for France, for Austria, and that uh, saves them a lot of uh, configuration and programming in the future. Obviously, there's another variant that I see in a lot of cases where within one legal entity, multiple ERP systems are being used. You might have a different purchasing solution that is being used um, that the sales organization is using for their sales orders. So uh, that also adds some complexity. It's important there to make a clear decision how do we want to approach it, at which level do we want to create the safety, and where will we get the data, and what is going to be our strategy here. Thirdly, and I think that's a, a very important exercise when you go, and Su Young will give some examples, uh, the translation, uh, translation of your tax requirements, your safety reporting requirements uh, into the IT requirements. You'll need to do mapping between what the tax authorities are describing in their um, specifications towards your tables, towards your fields. Most of the cases that is straightforward, but depending on how you have set up your ERP system internally, it uh, is not always that straightforward, so uh, um, you need to spend sufficient time in analyzing that. The fourth point, changes, and that's uh, something that we've seen in a lot of uh, countries. Uh, there's a new filing to be, uh, be performed, uh, as it is also for Poland. It is uh, new for the authorities. Um, the corporates will be on a learning curve how to efficiently create the safety files, but the, uh, the authorities will also be on a learning curve what data they want, which granularity they want, what additional data fields they want, and how they want to process it. So uh, the changes that we've always seen, changes in the legislations after the go live of a safety in a certain country. So uh, you need to be prepared to deal with the, the changes in the schemes. Also, this makes that the solution you're putting in place needs to be a flexible solution so that you can make easily changes uh, to the format and to the content. The fifth point, the new roles and responsibilities. In one, on one hand, you might say, well, that's an easy point. Um, I just appoint somebody to be responsible for my safety filing. Um, the difference with safety filing compared to a lot of the other filings is, as we've seen in the different schemes that need, need to be reported, uh, data is coming from different domains. It's about VT, it's about uh, assets, it's about bank statements. Uh, that VT data, sales order and, and purchase order data. So uh, different departments uh, are, have responsibility. So it's clear definitely in the larger organizations that uh, a, a good teaming between the different uh, departments and a clear responsibility of the correctness of the data uh, is taken uh, by uh, certain individuals. So really be organized and make sure that you identify the right person who has a, a, the responsibility ultimately for uh, making sure your organization is compliant with safety, but also that he informs the different departments why certain data fields or transactions are important to, to be set up correctly in the system. And then lastly, and I think that's an experience I want to share that I see a lot of uh, clients uh, asking the question, well, how should I now prepare for the safety filing? Uh, there's different ways. Or you say, uh, in, in, most in most countries where we've seen uh, the safety filing is not a mandatory, uh, a mon a mandatory monthly filing. It is rather a filing that is mandatory upon request. So they might ask you to file it uh, tomorrow. Uh, they might ask you to file it maybe in a year or, or two years from now. So a lot of clients are asking themselves, should I invest a lot to create all those safety files and maybe never having to send them to the authorities? What we see, there's, there's two trends that we see. Or corporates invest in it, they create the files and they have them ready on the shelf, which means they, they receive the request and they can file it immediately. Other companies, a lot of companies are uh, looking at 
a safety readiness uh, strategy. What does that uh, in, in, entail? This means that the process of how to uh, get the data out of the system, how to create a safety uh, file out of, uh, out of your ERP platform, the responsibility is well documented and is tested, but the real, the actual file will only be created at moment of request of uh, the authorities. This entails that uh, organizations spend a bit less time on the technology, uh, but are well prepared with the document process. Uh, obviously, the advantage there is if the file formats continuously change and you have never uh, be needing to provide a, uh, a filing towards the authorities, you have not been investing in solutions that never have been used. So that's a bit uh, the trends that we see and the challenges that we've seen in other countries um, happening uh, in the past. Maybe I'll quickly hand it over to uh, Xiu Yang. Um, Xiu Yang has had experiences implementing in Portugal and, uh, and, uh, Luxembourg, and France and Luxembourg. Uh, maybe, Suyong, if you can highlight a bit of your experiences, how it went in uh, Portugal. Okay. So now that we've gone through the typical challenges for SAFTI implementation, we would like to share our implementation experiences for other jurisdictions. So as Frank mentioned, uh, we will then go through the experiences in Portugal and France for the SAFTI implementation. Um, as we chose uh, Portugal and France because, as we briefly mentioned, most country has the requirement to submit the safety filing only upon request. However, for the companies in Portugal, it is required to provide the safety file to the tax authority on the monthly basis as of 2013. Now, as shown on the slide, we have applied the EY implementation methodology, starting from identifying the tax requirement and translating it to the IT requirement. During this process, we have identified that the companies in Portugal are required to prepare the monthly safety file, an annual safety file, and also an approval uh, on the goods movement out of their local warehouse, which is called the mini safety. The delivery approval requirement is similar to the Brazil Nota Fiscal, where trucks are not allowed to leave the warehouse until an approval is received. So on the monthly safety file, uh, one legal entity can submit as many XML files as required because companies are required to provide detailed sales transaction information, such as the customer detail, the material or services being provided, and even the general ledger accounts for that posting period. Due to the possible uh, big file size, the tax authority allows multiple file submission. However, on the annual safety file, the legal entity or one legal entity is allowed to only submit one XML file consisting of the accounting document posted for the year. For this implementation, unfortunately, our client has multiple ERP instances for that Portuguese uh, legal entity. Therefore, based on the identified gap, we have proposed and designed the solution for the client that includes the capability to submit the delivery approval request from the ERP system and the capability of merging multiple safety XML files from the different instances. Once the design were approved and signed off, we proceed with the configuration and customization in order to meet the requirement. During the testing, we make sure that the mini safety, which is the approval on the goods movement, works correctly, as this will have high impact on the businesses if approval are not received and therefore will block the deliveries to the customers. While the testing period, when we were doing the testing, we have also raised high priority defects to the SAP provider as the solution provider failed on several issues and caused the submission to be rejected by the tax authority. We'd also make sure and verify the um, extraction from the ERP system for both the monthly and annual safety file, SEMA, created 
uh, meets the requirements. So we make sure that the validation is done during the testing period as well. Before the go-live date, the Tech 3D has provided, uh, obviously this is Portugal specific, the Tech 3D has provided a testing portal to make sure that we tested all the safety file extracted are uh, meeting the requirements. With the completion of implementation, we kept a close eye on the legislation to make sure that we can update our client if there's any changes. For the Portuguese um, implementation, uh, we've seen that the schema was then changed twice but has minimal impact uh, on the implementation because we were monitoring the changes frequently. What we have then done with the changes of the schema is to make sure that the up-to-date schema is in the system and make sure that the testing and validation is done based on the latest schema. So we have then um, completed the Portuguese implementation and so far we have not seen an issue for this particular client. Now if we move on to the next slide, the example of the French um, implementation experience that we have. Um, we have then uh, implemented the, uh, uh, the French uh, safety-like uh, requirement, which is called FEC, shortly after the Portugal implementation for the same client. Now unlike the requirement for the Portugal, the French version is only required upon request. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the client was eager to have the system up to date and ready for the filing as of the start date that set by the tax authority. Similarly, we have then assisted the client on the translation from the tax requirement to the IT requirement. The correctness of the master data in the ERP system were almost complete due to the re recent Safety Portugal implementation. However, as the requirement is slightly different from the Portuguese requirement, we made sure that the client has the appropriate data file for the filing in their ERP system. During the testing, we had to perform additional regression testing because the solution provided to the client it's the same solution for the Safety Portugal. Therefore, we need to make sure that the new extract will not impact any existing solution uh, in the ERP system. So fortunately, since the implementation, the client has not been requested for the filing from the tax authority yet. Okay, thank you, Su Young. So th that were a couple of experiences in Portugal and, and France. And what was clear here that uh, testing throughout the process is a very important part and can be very time consuming, definitely seen uh, the large amount of data uh, that uh, needs to be reported. So I think now I'm going to hand over back to the team in Poland and uh, I guess we'll move on with the next topic uh, which is uh, more related, uh, more focused on the testing on the safety files. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Sue Young.